This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. The iPhone 13 is set to be released within the next three months at Apple's usual September event, and there are a lot of leaks and rumors surrounding the iPhone 13 from a faster 120 hertz display to a smaller notch, better camera performance, and even a slightly tweaked design. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and it seems like the iPhone 12 was released like just yesterday. I still feel like I'm appreciating the new squared off design of the iPhone 12, and I really feel like I haven't been using that phone all too long, which may have to do with the fact that Apple announced and shipped these phones later than their usual release dates, with the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro coming in at the end of October and the Pro Max and 12 mini shipping in November. So this iPhone 12's life cycle will be one of the shorter ones because for this year, one of the repeated rumors we keep hearing from supply chain analysts like Ming-Chi Kuo is that the iPhone 13 is not facing any of the manufacturing or supply issues the iPhone 12 had. So the iPhone 13 should launch on time. And what I mean by that is, even though Apple never tells us when to expect an iPhone release date or when they plan their events, Apple, like clockwork with the exception of last year, has been holding a September event where they unveil the latest iPhone. So with all these reports of no supply chain issues for this year, we should expect the iPhone 13 to be launching within the next three months. And like last year, we are still expecting a very diverse iPhone lineup with four different models. However, this year could be the last time we see the mini iPhone in the sales lineup, because according to sales reports, the iPhone 12 mini was apparently not selling as well as Apple thought it would, and apparently they have enough models on hand that they still haven't sold, and they completely ended the iPhone 12 mini production cycle. So according to rumors, Apple is no longer manufacturing the iPhone 12 mini, they're just selling what they have on hand now. With the iPhone 13, those phones are planned well in advance to the point that Apple will likely keep the 5.4 inch iPhone 13 mini in the lineup. And if you are a fan of the iPhone 12 mini like I am, well, this could be a one of a kind phone that won't be offered in the future iPhone lineups. And honestly, it may have me holding onto my iPhone 13 mini for a very, very long time. So with that in mind, with the iPhone 13 being on the verge of release, what new features can we realistically expect with this phone and what should we be looking forward to? Well, last year, many people were disappointed with the lack of a faster 120 hertz refresh rate screen, or as Apple calls it on their iPad Pro, a ProMotion display. If that was you, well, fear not. It looks like this year that Apple will be making quite a few changes to the iPhone 13's display. One of those being the faster 120 hertz ProMotion display. It's coming to the iPhone 13 according to these rumors. And Apple will do this by using LTPO panels to offer a variable refresh rate. That way, they can lower the refresh rate when you're not interacting with the display or watching content that doesn't require a high refresh rate, like a movie in 24 frames per second. By lowering the refresh rate, this helps Apple save on battery consumption and high refresh panels take a huge chunk out of battery life if they are always set to those higher refresh rates. Now there's no denying it, if 120 hertz makes it to this year's iPhone 13, that will without a doubt be the standout hardware feature. Apple's ProMotion display already works incredibly well on the iPad Pro, and I imagine it would pretty much offer the same exact experience, just this time on a much smaller display. And everything from simple things like scrolling to iPhone animations, those will look amazing, and games should be able to take advantage of this faster 120 hertz display to offer incredibly smooth gameplay. The only thing I'm not sure of is if the ProMotion display will make its way to the regular iPhone 13 or just be exclusive to the Pro models. If I had to throw in my own analysis here, I think this is going to be an exclusive feature to the bigger Pro models. Now, because it is using an LTPO display, this is the same display technology that Apple already uses in their Apple Watches to enable the always-on display feature, and it is widely rumored that Apple will be bringing an always-on display to the iPhone 13. This always-on display will reportedly show things like 
the time, the battery indicator, and things like notifications. Honestly, I'm not sure how to feel about an always on display. When I use Android phones that had an always on display, I was never really that much of a fan of how they were implemented, and I usually ended up turning that feature off. The fact that I wear an Apple Watch, I feel like negates the need for me to even have an always on display because the first display I look at, the things I check for like time, weather, or my notifications first is my Apple Watch. So I don't feel like I'll really benefit from an always on display. With that being said, I can see some handy uses for an always on display, especially if Apple lets us customize widgets to put on the always on display. I could see that being useful when say like I'm charging my phone and I'm using one of those vertical wireless charging stands. Well, that could be helpful at a glance and I can kind of use that as like a small bedside alarm clock. Now, before we talk about the design and additional features of the iPhone 13, no matter what phone you're using, you need to have a fast, reliable, and most importantly, a secure VPN, which is why you should check out our sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. Listen, there are a lot of VPNs out on the market today, but Surfshark is a step above others that has some of the fastest VPN connection speeds on the market. And it's also easy to use on every single device you own with just one subscription. So you can stay safe when accessing public Wi-Fi spots on your phone or when you're browsing the web at home. You can do that all securely on any operating system like Mac, iOS, Windows, Android, and more. Not only is Surfshark easy to use, but it also comes jam-packed with features, letting you pick which country to use as a virtual network, letting you bypass artificial geo-blocking content. So that means you can get past censored web content in some countries or access other large catalogs of content. For example, Netflix has separate country libraries which are different depending on which country you log in from, like Japan's huge library of exclusive shows. And Surfshark is also safe, secure, and private because it maintains a strict no logs policy so they never keep your data and it's all backed up by industry leading encryption best of all surfshark has a special code just for greg's gadgets viewers that will give you an 83 percent discount off a plan and three extra months of service for free you can get this all by clicking the link in the description so make sure you check out surfshark vpn and thank you so much to surfshark for sponsoring this video as for the design of the iPhone 13, we should expect a pretty similar design to last year's iPhone 12. And the body of the phone should pretty much be the same with a few exceptions. And we can get a clearer picture with this recent dummy phone leak. These are kind of the dummy units that case manufacturers would use. And we can see that there is a different camera placement for the non-pro models. And these will now have a diagonal camera arrangement. The cameras themselves should see some improvements to the camera quality like we kind of get with every iPhone. But one of the most recent rumors I heard about was that Apple may be incorporating the sensor shift stabilization method that they currently have as an exclusive feature to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So they might be bringing that to the entire iPhone 13 lineup. We may also see some new color options with the iPhone 13 Pro, and there is rumored to be a new deep black color option, so really black, and possibly a new bronze orangish color option. The front of the iPhone 13 will also look a little different this year, which isn't usually the use case. Usually the fronts look the same after the body got a redesign, but based on multiple rumors, it is possible that we may be getting a smaller notch this year. I know a lot of people are probably shouting finally, but honestly, I have never felt like we needed a smaller notch. The notch never personally bothered me, and I imagine this new smaller notch isn't going to change much visually for the iPhone 13. I mean, we're only going to be getting the smallest, littlest bit of more display space for our status icons. Like, who really cares? Uh, listen, I'll only be really impressed when Apple can finally get rid of the entire notch, get rid of all the camera cutouts, and incorporate all the sensors and cameras behind the display without losing out on camera quality. I know some Android phones can put a camera behind the display already, but apparently the pictures they take with that front-facing camera are like awful. Perhaps one of the most exciting upgrades, or well, I guess downgrades, side grades, is that Apple is rumored to be bringing back the Touch ID sensor and now putting it 
under the display. Now, this doesn't mean that Face ID is going away. Apparently, Apple will incorporate both biometric methods and let users choose whether they want to use Face ID or Touch ID. Obviously, this past year has really shown the weaknesses of Face ID, with a lot of people wearing face masks, so it does make sense to bring back the fingerprint reader as another option for unlocking your phone. It also makes it possible for Apple to incorporate a dual option for even more security by having Face ID scan your face and scan your fingerprint at the same time to unlock your phone. I'd honestly love to see this implemented as an option for when you have to reboot your phone and those times where it won't accept Face ID or Touch ID, I would love for Apple to have an option instead of entering your passcode to just scan your thumbprint, get a scan of your face, and then let you use your phone. I think that would be such a big improvement to the usability of these biometric sensors and it would be totally something that I enable. As for what's powering the iPhone 13, well, obviously I think it's safe to assume we will be getting another processor bump this year with what Apple will likely call the A15 chip. The A15 chip should bring even more performance improvements to the iPhone 13. And for all of you who think your iPhone 12 is, you know, slow, I mean, come on, no one thinks that. The iPhone 12 is already super fast. But I am looking forward to seeing the A15 chip, not really for the iPhone because likely the next M2 chip will be based off the design process of this A15 chip, and that will give us a slight glimpse into some of the power and features that will make its way over to the M2 chip that will be in future Macs. Another change that may be coming to the iPhone 13 was one of my most requested features for the iPhone 12, and that is simply just a bigger battery for these devices. Now yes, the iPhone 12 Pro Max has amazing battery life, but that's not necessarily the same for the smaller iPhone 12 models. I'm looking at you, iPhone 12 mini. The iPhone 12 mini could really benefit from at least an additional hour of battery life, and I think that would make it such a better phone. This year, the iPhone 13 is supposed to have more battery capacity in every model. This makes sense to power some of the more power hungry features like that 120 Hertz ProMotion display. So the Pro models obviously should be getting a battery bump to compensate for that. But the bigger batteries I think will make a bigger difference on the smaller iPhone 13 mini. Apparently the bigger batteries are also supposed to make all of the iPhone 13 models slightly heavier, but that is definitely a trade off I am willing to make. As for the price point of the iPhone 13, I think it's likely that prices will remain the same across the entire lineup. So the mini is still gonna start at $729 without a carrier plan, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max will start at $1,099. Of course, like I said at the start of this video, you should expect an Apple event sometime this September where Apple will show off these new iPhones, and then we should expect them to ship in that same month. So no delays like last year, no October and November release dates, at least according to these rumors. If that ends up happening, you know, don't, don't come at me, I'm just the messenger. So yeah, we really don't have to wait too much longer to see what the iPhone 13 has to offer, and honestly, I don't know, I'm not really feeling the hype right now. I'm still very happy with my iPhone 12, and although some of these improvements do sound nice, like a bigger battery for the mini, it doesn't sound like any of these features are really that game-changing for me. But that's just what I think. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you excited for the iPhone 13? And what features are you looking forward to? And if none of these features really impress you, are you planning on skipping the iPhone 13 this year? Also, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, well, obviously make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way or follow me on some of my social media, Make sure you check out the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.